we go to practice set 2.2 question 3 which states that represent the numbers root 5 and root 10 on a number line so today we'll be doing the construction of root 5 similarly you will complete the construction of root 10 on the number line now to understand how we represent these numbers on a number line there is a certain basic concept which you have to understand let us see what it is now you see here what what i have noted down i have written the squares of 1 2 and 3 when we have to find the square of a number we num multiply the number by itself 1 square is 1 into 1 which is 1 2 square is 2 into 2 which is 4 3 square is 3 into 3 which is 9 now why have i written this you know that we have to find the square root of 5 and the square root of 10 that is we have to represent both of them on the number line and we know that 1 plus 4 is 5 and 1 plus 9 is 10 so using these three squares only we will find or we will represent root 5 and root 10 on the number line now to represent root 5 we know that 1 plus 4 is 5 that is why we have to use one square and two square now look here i have written 5 is equal to 1 plus 4 we know that 5 is 1 plus 4 but what was 1 it was 1 square so in place of 1 i write 1 square in place of 4 i have 2 square so i have written 5 is equal to 1 square plus 2 square now both of these on the right hand side are written as squares but 5 is not written as a square so if i way to write 5 as a square it would be nothing else than root 5 square so how can we get that we know a number with the root sign multiplied by the same number with the root sign will give the number itself that is if i say root 2 into root 2 it is 2 root 3 into root 3 it is 3 so same way here if i way to get 5 it would be root 5 into root 5 so therefore i can write 5 as root 5 square so root 5 square equal to 1 square plus 2 square now in the earlier classes you have seen whenever we represent numbers like this we are referring to nothing but the pythagoras theorem way one number square equal to the other number square plus the third number square now what happens in that case the number which is on the left hand side which we are saying that number square is nothing but the hypotenuse and the other two are the sides which form the right angle and how do we get that that is by the pythagoras theorem which states that the hypotenuse square is equal to side 1 square plus side 2 square now if i way not to look at the squares and only look at the numbers what would i understand from this that means my hypotenuse can be root 5 the side 1 can be of one unit and side 2 can be of two units so if i way to represent root 5 on the number line i can draw a right angled triangle with the sides one unit and two units that is the sides forming the right angle then i would get the length of the hypotenuse as root 5 and then i would proceed to mark this or represent root 5 on the number line so let us see how we do it we will start from the very first step now look at my scale here you will see that i have held the scale in such a way that i have the inches marked here why i have taken that part because i can see that the distance between each of them it is quite a lot if you see this side you have centimeters where the distance between each successive unit is very less so i will take that side of my scale where i have inches 
and first draw the number line so you see me drawing the number line and after i draw the number line i will mark all these points at each inch okay i have finished drawing the number line now the number line i will start with minus 1 now why have i started with minus 1 because in a number line usually we have both a negative and positive numbers so i start with minus 1 even though i don't need it and root 5 is not negative but i still write only minus 1 so after minus 1 comes 0 then 1 2 3 and 5 so my number line is done now what do i do if you remember i said that the lengths of the sides forming the right angle are one unit and two units now we see that this is one unit okay and i am going to name my right angle triangle as oab so if i take zero as the point which represents o and this number 1 as the point which represents a i have already one side of one unit now i have to have the second side of length two units but if you see here the my right angled triangle is right angled at a that means i have to have a right angle at a so to have a right angle at a i have to construct a perpendicular at a so how do i construct a perpendicular at a okay so see this compass here and i have fixed a sketch pen into this okay so this is the compass which you call as rounder okay you keep this compass point at at a why have we to keep it at a because at a i have to construct a perpendicular i keep it at a okay and with a convenient radius i draw arcs on either side of the number line okay i draw arcs on either side of the number line so that they it cuts the number line at two parts okay why have i done that because now i will increase the radius of this compass and now where these arcs have cut the number line i will now keep the compass at these points okay and uh, draw arc so i draw one arc like this and where this arc was cutting the number line i will cut this okay now what has happened here i have got that two arcs are cutting each other now what do i do i keep the scale like this and from the point a i will draw a line passing through the intersection of the two arcs and meeting the point a what is this line now it is the perpendicular at point a so if we have drawn a perpendicular what should i do i should mark here that it is a right angle now have i only to draw a perpendicular i had told you this is of one unit so now i have to have one side of two units so what do i do i take my compass and find measure of two units on this scale okay so now i will keep the point of the rounder at a okay point of the rounder at a and now cut this perpendicular 
okay i have cut the perpendicular now you watch here okay i have cut this perpendicular now this point where this arc has cut the perpendicular that will be the third vertex of the right angled triangle which is b now sometimes you may have a confusion that in my figure i have got that this point b is above the intersection of these arcs sometimes you may get it below this also it is still fine don't get confused just see that you are measuring exactly two units so i have got two units above this intersection of arcs so now my next step is to join o to b to form the third side of the right angled triangle so i will join now o to b now i think it is clear to all of you that we have got a right angled triangle here oa is one unit ab we had taken as two units now you look at my working what i have written here what have i written here triangle oab is a right angled triangle right angled at a therefore according to pythagoras theorem we know pythagoras theorem states that hypotenuse square equal to side 1 square plus side 2 square where these two sides are the sides forming the right angle now what is the hypotenuse look here it is ob so i have written ob square what is side 1 it is oa so i have written o a square what is side 2 it is a b so i have written here a b square okay o b square we write as it is o a b no it is of one unit therefore one square plus a b is two units therefore it is two square o b square is equal to one square is nothing but one 2 square is nothing but 4 therefore ob square is equal to 1 plus 4 which is 5 if ob square is 5 what is ob now it is root 5 units that means in this right angled triangle of mine this ob what i have drawn is of root 5 units this is the length of ob but what was my question represent root 5 on the number line so i have to mark it on the number line so what do i do now i take my compass and find this distance between o and b and then mark it on the number line okay now see here this distance from the point o to the to b is root 5 okay but i want to mark it on the number line so from this point o from this point o by keeping the point of the rounder at o i will draw an arc on the number line so you see where the arc has cut the number line the arc has cut the number line here so i will represent it in red for you so this point okay this point where the arc has cut the number line that is root 5 okay now i can tell you one more thing so that you understand very clearly that your answer is right that is root 5 you have marked properly now how will we know whether root 5 is right that you have marked first of all you must understand that this root 5 when you mark it should lie between the points 2 and 3 and it is lying exactly between 2 and 3 yes okay 
it is lying between 2 and 3 why should it lie between 2 and 3 because 2 square is 4 that means this is 2 is nothing but root 4 2 square is 4 so this is root 4 and same way 3 square is 9 therefore this is root 9 so if this is if this is root 4 and this is root 9 then phi lies between 4 and 9 correct phi lies between 4 and 9 that means what have marked is correct